There's been lots of rumors floating around about former first-round pick of the Winnipeg Jets, Rutger McGordy. Today, we're looking at another trade that was close and was being discussed with the Washington Capitals that almost happened around the time of the NHL draft. We'll discuss how this deal could have worked, how it could have benefited both teams, and whether or not we think it could be revisited coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we're taking a look at another trade that was uh, would have been significant uh, and had a big impact on both these teams. Uh, ultimately, was discussed but never ended up being finalized. Uh, so obviously, we know there's been lots of rumors around former first round pick from the 2022 NHL Draft. Rucker McGordy, the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, we had learned uh, a few weeks leading into the draft beforehand, um, back in early part of June, I believe it was, that um, McGordy was looking for a new opportunity and didn't see himself signing and continuing, uh, you know, starting his NHL career with the Winnipeg Jets. After all, I mean, when he was first drafted, we saw him say a lot of good things. Everything seemed very positive. Even after first year of uh, college hockey, Still, everything seemed very, very strong. Uh, nobody really suspected that this was going to happen. Uh, but apparently, at the end of uh, this past season, when his college season was coming to an end, he wanted to sign and turn pro and be given an NHL opportunity, he wanted to go straight to the NHL. The Winnipeg Jets, of course, were having a really good regular season. We're in a major playoff push, you know, qualifying, trying to see if they can win the Central Division, qualify as high as they can in the playoffs. And it's not that they were unwilling to sign him. They definitely were. They just were reluctant to guarantee him NHL time. Uh, I think they wanted him to be okay with the idea that he may have to spend a little bit of time in the American Hockey League, uh, developing a little bit further uh, and see what kind of opportunity he could get. I mean, obviously, you know, the end of the season was getting near. It just seemed like some really big demands from a player that was not established and has never played an NHL game. You know, obviously, he looks like he had good potential. He's a pretty rugged winger who, you know, many people feel like should be a top six, if not a very least a middle six, you know, type of winger who can play a uh, physical style of game, contribute offensively, you know, has shown good leadership skills in the past, uh, and just be one of those guys that you might really need that style of play to, to win and be more successful. So I know Winnipeg really liked his play and was quite happy to draft him. And, and like I said, his first year of development after was really good. Things were progressing. And then just took a wild turn with some big demands. Now, of course, he's really good friends with Cutter Goche, who kind of pulled the same sort of stunt with the Philadelphia Flyers. I can't suggest that the one influenced the other, but it does kind of seem like it's possible given that, you know, how close of friends they are, you know, uh, and then we see scenarios unfold with both sides. We've seen so many rumors around McGordy. Uh, we talked about one just in the past day or so. There was a deal that was close with the Carolina Hurricanes involving McGordy and Perfetti, uh, possibly being uh, offered to the Hurricanes from Arnie Natchez. We also had heard McGordy um, was in conversations with the Buffalo Sabres. Like, well, not McGordy, but the Jets around McGordy. But once the Sabres, the rumor that I had heard was that once McGordy, as uh, uh, demands became clear to the Sabres, that they were reluctant to pull the trigger. Uh, and several other teams were kind of in that same boat. So uh, at this point, we haven't really seen a team that's willing to make an offer to the Jets that is willing to give him NHL time right away. But a deal that did get close was the Winnipeg Jets and the Washington Capitals involving Connor McMichael being on the table from Washington side. Now, of course, there's no uh, guarantee here that it was a strictly a one-for-one -one deal. Uh, we don't know if there was other pieces involved, but we do know that McMichael and McGordy were discussed in trades between the Jets and the Capitals, and it could have been a major deal for both sides. Now, ultimately, at one point in the not-too-distant past, the Washington Capitals did not have very good depth at the center position. Um, now they're in a much different spot. Of course, last year they brought in Dylan Strom as a free agent, so that was helpful, of course. Um, then, of course, on top of that, this year they acquired Pierre-Luc Dubois. Of course, Nick Backstrom hasn't really played. Uh, he's not expected to come back, so that, that's a big blow. They traded Kuznetsov to the Hurricanes late last season, so that kind of depletes things a little bit further. They have Nick Down, who's a pretty good fourth-line center, um, but then they have Hendricks Lapierre, uh, also a youngster, similar age uh, to McMichael, of course, him, those two guys coming up through the Washington system together. Um, you know, and but now with the addition of Dubois, 
you kind of have more than enough guys who can play center. Now, they're in a spot where you kind of have probably five guys. And according to head coach Spencer Carberry, comments he made suggested that out of the out of the group of them, uh, that McMichael was going to be the most logical one that he thought that would move to the wing. So it doesn't mean that they don't see McMichael as being a part of the team. doesn't mean they see him as being expendable. But if they can get themselves a real good player, it sounds like, you know, at this point, they're willing to consider it at least, right? Um, so ultimately, we know from Winnipeg's side uh, that there's a lot of talk about moving this player because he doesn't want to be there, so, right? So ultimately, he, they'd love it if things change and he signed and would not have a good career there, but that, that doesn't seem to be in the cards as of right now. So McMichael would be a great fit at center with Winnipeg. Winnipeg does not have the depth at center that they were hoping for. They really need to figure out the number two spot. It could still possibly turn out to be Cole Perfetti. And he might get a shot there, but right now it's looking like Perfetti might be better served as a winger in the NHL too. Uh, so we'll see on that front. But at the same time, like they weren't able to keep Sean Monaghan. Uh, they were interested in re-signing him. Of course, he went there to trade deadline last year. We had a strong – well, actually, he was ahead of the deadline. to get there a little bit early. But he was a strong, um, you know, fit there. It worked really well. He contributed. He was productive. Unfortunately, they couldn't keep him in free agency. He signed in Columbus. Uh, there was also some other centers that they were looking at too, um, and they lost out on. So that there's a hole there in that spot with the Jets right now, and they kind of seen McMichael as a, a potential fit. You know, a young up-and-coming player, somebody who could grow with that group and ultimately could be a big piece for them long-term. So to me, it makes a lot of sense from Winnipeg's perspective. If they can get a good young player back like McMichael, who's just a couple of years ahead of McGordy as far as experience, development, and a bit of an NHL experience now, um, good speed, good, good instincts there, that would have been a good deal. In all honesty, um, we're not sure why this trade didn't go down exactly. Uh, obviously, uh, McGordy, even though he's not signed, he does have, I guess you could say, some say. But it's, this could be a case of before they pull the trigger, you know, on a deal, just like we heard about Natchez and everything. Like you know, the guys that are, even though they don't have trade protection per se, and they're you know, young player without being established. If they're not going to sign a contract, though, and they do have that signing, you know, holdback, which gives them leverage, makes all the difference. So if Washington uh, was not comfortable telling him, like, okay, we'll guarantee you an NHL spot, sign here, and if that wasn't going to be something that they both wanted to agree on, then it would have been probably what caused the deal to go sideways and, you know, not really happen. Uh, obviously, like I said, there could have been other parts to this deal. We're not sure. We've seen the Capitals be aggressive this offseason and make a lot of moves. And while this could have been another part of that, obviously, like I said, I don't think they're out there trying to shop Connor McMichael. Um, but given the, the changes to their center depth position, it's a situation where they felt if they could get uh, a, a different type of winger, um, that maybe they would do that. Obviously, he's a bit younger bit more physical and maybe they thought the style and play difference was uh, something they were willing to do obviously but at the end of the day I think this would have been a, a pretty good deal for both sides I, I do think McGordy gives a different element that McMichael does McMichael could have fit well in, in Winnipeg given that number two center spot it would have been a big opportunity for him to be more consistently higher in the lineup and overall it, it could have worked but you know we don't know the exact reasons why they didn't pull the trigger on this but like I said, it could have been the uh, capital side maybe not willing to give in to the demands of McGordy, perhaps, and kind of go from there. But let me know your thoughts on this trade that was obviously discussed, came close, but never quite materialized. Uh, do you think this would have been a good deal for both sides? Do you see there being a clear-cut winner? I can see how this trade could have benefited both teams, um, but ultimately we'll never know because obviously it didn't happen. But could it be something that gets revisited? Obviously, we don't know if the Jets are going to be real patient and kind of push McGordy to go back to school because we know at this point that McGordy's not going to sign a Winnipeg. He's uh, scheduled to go back to school for his third year. And, you know, unless something changes that, you know, with the trade, that's probably what we're going to see, right? Now, once he's in school, um, he's going to likely want to finish the season before he comes out and signs. So, you know, a trade like this, if it doesn't happen in the next probably three to four weeks, 
it probably wouldn't happen until the trade deadline. Most likely, right? And so, you know, Washington, if they like, to, if they continue to watch this player and they see his season in college and they, and they continue to like him, maybe they will consider moving McMichael. But at the same time, it gives them a chance to see how the PLD experience goes. Is he going to remain a top six center for them? Uh, obviously, they've taken on a lot of risk with that contract. Is it going to work out? Um, you know, they have Strom there. Strom and PLD will be. Uh, their top two, you have Lapierre, who's probably going to be in the third, the three hole, I would think, and then down at four. So hard to say how this works out, but I can see there being a possibility of it being revisited. Let me know what you think down below. Should they revisit it? Who do you think benefits the most, or is it pretty even on both sides? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.